Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. Today we are going to talk about design and simulation of SEPIC converter in MATLAB. This is the circuit diagram of a SEPIC converter. The name SEPIC stands for Single Ended Primary Inductance Converter. SEPIC converter from the circuit diagram we can see it's a combination of boost converter followed by a buck boost converter. Hence it's similar to traditional buck boost converter but has an advantage of having non-inverting output. For example if we are producing a positive voltage you will be getting a positive voltage. If you are getting uh, negative voltage at the output it means you are supplying negative voltage. Uh, that means whatever polarity of input voltage that you are supplying is what you are getting at the output. That is one of the distinctive features of this particular converter. Now let's get started with the design aspect of SEPIC converter. This is the uh, given data for us. From this uh, we have uh, four steps to design SEPIC converter. Step one is to determine the duty ratio which is given by the formula. Uh, uh, one thing to note here is whenever the duty cycle is greater than 0.5 the output voltage will be greater than the supply voltage. Whenever duty ratio is less than 0.5 it will be less than uh, the output voltage uh, will be less than the uh, supply voltage. So in this case the duty ratio is less than 0.5 that means the output voltage will be obviously less therefore V out is equal to 6 volts. Step 2 is to determine the average inductor currents and change in inductor currents. So we will be finding out IL1, IL2 and we are assuming 40% changes in ripple current and then we will be finding the change in inductor currents that is delta IL1 and delta IL2. Next step is to determine the inductor values. Uh, inductor values can be calculated by the formula given over there. Uh, so we'll be finding out L1 and L2. Uh, the final step is to determine the capacitor value. We are assuming 2% of ripple. Uh, in this circuit, uh, C1 and C2 will alway, always be same. So uh, this is one of the most important points that we need to take into consideration. So uh, the next step is uh, we need to have these components uh, in MATLAB. Uh, once we have them, uh, we will be able to get started with MATLAB. So let's. All right, uh, here we are. So let's set up the values uh, initially. So we're using an inductor. Uh, the value of inductance L1 is 35.62. So we'll be setting that up first. 35.62 micro Henry. So. Uh, the value of uh, the capacitance that is used over here. This is the type the type of component used is a capacitance uh, and uh, the capacitance value is 28.57. So we'll set that 28.57. Uh, we have uh, an inductor uh, L2 and its uh, value is 14.25 um, micro Henry. So we will set that as well. So care has to be taken while setting these values. So uh, we have a capacitor a capacitor connected across the load which is C2 which is having the same value as that of the input one that is uh, 28.57 microfarad. So we will set that as well. So uh, a resistive load is used in this case we can also try it for different loads as well but the value of resistance chosen over here is 2 ohms. So let's set that up first. Uh, we are not using uh, something called measurement port so let's disable them uh, for the switches that are there in the circuit. Uh, once that is done we need to uh, rig up the circuit uh, as shown in the circuit diagram. Uh, one of the most important things to remember is the position of the MOSFET. We need to ensure that MOSFET is placed in this position. Uh, otherwise, uh, there are chances that the device uh, will not function properly. So these are uh, commonly made mistakes by the students. Uh, source has to come in the downward direction as shown. Uh, we are connecting a diode uh, in the forward direction. Uh, this is a common like that as well. So we have a, a capac capacitor connected across uh, the load. So once uh, we place all these components, uh, uh, we are measuring the voltage across the resistive load that is across the output over here. So uh, we'll connect them across the resistor. Uh, this is in turn connected to a scope which is uh, used for uh, displaying uh, the waveforms. Uh, we can also determine the RMS value and display it using a display screen. So it actually gives you the magnitude but not the sign so care has to be taken in that as well. So uh, we will be setting uh, the input voltage which is uh, 15 volt in this case. Uh, once that is done we I guess we have already set all the parameters except uh, this one. So one of the most important uh, steps is uh, this one. So uh, the duty cycle is 28.57 in our uh, 
uh, design so we'll be cho choosing that uh, time period is nothing but uh, one over the switching frequency since we have chosen 250 kilohertz um, the reciprocal of it is 4 into 10 power minus 6 so we'll enter that value as well so once this is done we'll reduce the simulation time to one second so uh, the simulation takes faster all right uh, so we'll uh, check the waveform uh, we're getting an output voltage of about 5 5 volt so as i mentioned since we are supplying positive voltage we will be getting positive uh, voltage at the output as well so that is one of the most important things so let's uh, zoom in this uh, voltage that is available and check the ripple as well so we're getting uh, a ripple uh, of about 0.1 volts 0.2 so it's totally fine uh, we can design it for uh, reducing the ripple further by choosing inductor and capacitor values suitably uh, if you like this video please do like it and also subscribe to our channel electronics maddie for instant updates thank you